So we're going to start with one of two blue buckets that I found at Dollar Tree and we are going to start by cutting off the handles so that they're flat all around. So I'm taking just normal scissors because this plastic is pretty uh, thin and I'm just cutting the handles off at the lip of the bucket. Now that the handles have been cut off of both of my buckets, I'm gonna be flipping them over base to base to glue them together. In order to do this, we're gonna hot glue the bases together I'm using a Sherbonder glue gun with Gorilla Glue Sticks and going around the base of one of my buckets and making sure it's covered completely with hot glue. And then I'm going to be working pretty quickly because this glue sets pretty fast, but it's pretty firm once it does set, which is why I chose it. I'm stacking my other bowl on top of it. Now, once that has set, you can see I'm going through with my hot glue gun to try and get a little bit of reinforcement around the bases. And I'm even doing this while standing it up. I'm going to give this some time to dry and then we'll move on to the next step. For our next step, we're going to take our pool noodles and we're going to start cutting them in half. I'm using an X-Acto blade and I am just slicing right down the middle. Make sure to cut away from you so that you're not risking the possibility of cutting yourself. Be safe when you do this step. Um, but yeah, we're just going to go through every single pool noodle all the way down on both sides until it is split in half. Now that we have our two separate pieces, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna choose one side and we are going to be taking our buckets and we are gonna be applying our pool noodles to them. I'm using hot glue to apply the pool noodles to the buckets and really holding onto it to allow it time to set. This might take a little bit of time, but trust me, it's worth it. And you'll see later on in this tutorial, I actually end up using painter's tape to help hold the pool noodles in place so that I can move on to other uh, layers that I'm adding to this. But the best approach I could find with this is just doing a little bit by bit on each row, putting enough glue and then holding the pool noodle in place over the glue for an extended period of time, depending on what type of glue sticks you're using for this project or how much time uh, it takes for that glue to set. Um, I want to encourage you to overestimate how much time it's going to take to dry. Once we finish that first row, we're going to move on and upwards on this project and applying the same method of gluing a little bit and then pulling the pool noodle to form the shape and holding it in place. For the top level, I used painter's tape as well to kind of fold over the lip of the top of the project to hold it in place even better, uh, just so I could continue to work around the circumference of the project and get those pool noodles exactly where I wanted them to be and to be able to really close it so that there wouldn't be like a huge lip um, where the pool noodles are supposed to meet. Next, I'm taking caulk from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to be actually adding it to the indentations between my pool noodles. I wanted there to be a little less of a gap in certain places, and I thought it would be a really great way to create kind of a, uh, a foundation when I add some paint to it next. So what we're doing is we're going around with the caulk. I'm using the tip of the, the caulk, and I'm also using my finger to kind of smooth it out and make sure it stays in the area that I want it to be. And then this is going to require um, it to dry overnight or an extended period of time. I would give it plenty of time to dry overnight as suggested. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to go around all of the pool noodles in between to really seal off um, the spacing. Now that we've completed adding all of the caulk to all the little indentations between the pool noodles, the next step I'm gonna be accomplishing will be uh, painting it. So let's go ahead and wrap this up and let it dry and then we'll move on to the next step. So for this step, I'm using Rust-Oleum chalked paint in the color linen white with a brush that I got at Dollar Tree and I'm going over my pool noodles. Um, the caulk is completely dry at this point so it's totally fine to paint on. It's not going to smear anything. Um, but I'm just going to be painting this entire thing white before we move on to the next step. So with that being said, we're going to speed things up a little bit. You will want to make sure you're painting in even strokes 
I definitely recommend using a brush for this step. And we're just going to go all the way around and giving it plenty of time to dry before we move on to the next step. Now that our project is completely painted white, we are going to be taking our Rust-Oleum stone spray paint with some texture in it. We're going to take it outside and we are going to spray it completely to give it that stone finish. Make sure you shake up your can very, very well before you start applying and start applying the spray paint in nice, even coats all the way around the entire project, giving it plenty of time to dry before you flip it over to try and paint other parts of it. So now we're going to give this project plenty of time to dry. And here is the finished product. I'm really happy with how this planter turned out. I think it looks great in my home. I hope you feel inspired to try this project. Thank you so much for watching Home Talk and I will see you in the next one. So in a well ventilated covered surface, spray paint the outside of your pots. It's best to use a couple of really light coats. So I'm spraying these pots here and it's definitely not gonna cover on the first try. I'm gonna let it dry for maybe 20 minutes and then come back and add a second, even a third coat if needed until everything is covered. Once everything is dry, we're gonna dry fit these together to make sure they look how we want them to look. So one small pot goes in the inside of the large one and then the medium one goes on top of that. So I've got some room around here to plant, but I actually want some more room than that. So I am gonna grab a large rock. You can use pebbles, gravel, or even soil for this. And then I'm gonna put that small pot back in and add the medium one on top. So once I know that this all is exactly how I want it, now I'm gonna take this apart and use some E6000 glue to attach these tiers together. I wanna add something unique to this pot. I am gonna put my address on the front. So I'm grabbing some vinyl stickers. It's best to use stickers that are good for outdoor. So you can head to the mailbox section of your hardware store and pick up some really good adhesive vinyl stickers. And I am just gonna stick them right on the front of the pot. The glue is dry and we are ready to assemble. So I've got this tier put together here. I'm just gonna set that inside. And then I'm gonna grab some potting soil and fill in the large pot. And I'm gonna repeat the process for the top, adding in that last tier and filling it in with potting soil in the orange pot and the yellow. I'm gonna fill this planter for fall. So I grabbed some hardy annuals that I know are mostly foliage and will have rich, beautiful colors for another couple of months here outdoors. So I'm gonna add a few in each pot, kind of around the edges, and filling in the gaps with extra soil. I'm gonna to top off this planter with a yellow mum for fall. I hope this inspired you to take some of those plastic pots you already have and turn them into something beautiful for your home. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.